Hello, I'm Shweta Sridhar and this is a project on object motion tracking and detection using MATLAB. This project is part of the image processing and computer vision course. Motion detection is basically identifying objects in a video that have a relative displacement or a change in position. Once such objects are identified, the tracking of these objects is performed by placing a target on them and maintaining the position of the target according to the movement of the object. The applications of motion detection and tracking are in many fields. The most critical application is for security such as video surveillance in banks and government offices. Another important field where motion detection and tracking is used is in the field of medical sciences. Biomedical applications such as endoscopy and MRI scanning require constant detection and tracking of the system. A video can be represented as an array of image frames. Even though images are still, the concept of motion of objects in these images arises due to the persistence of vision. Video sequencing analysis is used to identify the information that represents the motion of objects between frames of a video. This information is related to uh, color variation, change in position or change in illumination and intensity of the frames in the video. The accuracy of the tracking algorithm is largely dependent on the accuracy of the detection algorithm. Hence there are three commonly used detection algorithms in place today. They are optical flow, the background subtraction method and the frame difference algorithm. The optical flow method performs detection on a fixed time interval of the video. The motion of the image is mathematically modeled and the objects within the image get represented by the same equation. The process involves computation of this equation for every frame and identifying the change in the equation's parameters. So this process is complex and computationally very intensive because the equations have to be computed for every object in every frame. This method is not suitable for real-time tracking. Another popular motion detection algorithm is the background subtraction algorithm. The consequent frames of the images are separated into background and foreground frames and the difference between the frame under consideration and the background frame is performed pixel wise. So once this is performed, we can track the motion of the object in the foreground by comparing its change in intensity and change in pixel values with the still background. This is a very simple implementation and performs detection very quickly. But the background frame, which is the reference for identifying the motion of the object, is very sensitive to noise. So if there is a variation in the background frame, there is false detection or no detection of the objects that have moved. The most efficient algorithm for motion detection is the adjacent frame difference algorithm. This algorithm detects the displacement of objects by comparing two frames. The two frames if because they are captured with a very small temporal difference will have very similar background features hence it is easily highlighting the motion of the object in the foreground it is the simplest and quickest implementation for motion detection and performs the most efficient detection because the background will be the change in the background is very less in terms of color and illumination the detection and tracking algorithm consists of many stages as shown in the block diagram. The first stage is video acquisition. So for real time systems, uh, the video is accessed as a live feed from capturing systems such as CCTVs or cameras. These are used for critical applications as mentioned before, security and surveillance and for medical applications such as endoscopy. In MATLAB, real time feed can be programmed by using the image acquisition toolbox. For testing the detection and tracking algorithms in use or for systems that do not require online detection and tracking, pre-recorded videos can be used, which is what is performed in the project shown later ahead. The first step of the detection and tracking algorithm is pre-processing of the videos. Pre-processing of the video is performed to enhance the performance and the accuracy of the detection and tracking algorithm. The video is uh, undergone many processes before uh, detection and tracking algorithm is applied onto it. It suppresses the noise and highlights the desired features of the video. 
So basically the steps involved in video pre-processing are as shown. The first step is separating the videos into frames. Each frame is stored for information that is required later in the detection and tracking process. So the 4D matrix of the frame consists of height, width, format and the frame number. Each frame is then stored as an image because the frame difference has to be calculated using these images. To make the algorithm faster and less memory intensive, we perform RGB to grayscale conversion of every image or every frame. To test whether the frames have been generated correctly without any unwanted artifacts, a recombination of the frames is performed and the video is played again. The two consecutive frames of the images are as shown, even though the difference is not uh, very evident in these two frames, the difference will be identified when these are converted to grayscale and the pixel values are subtracted. The two frames are converted into grayscale. Uh, the grayscale performance is, I mean, grayscale conversion is performed using the simple RGB to gray command in MATLAB. The frame difference algorithm or the frame difference process is used to identify those objects that have a movement in them. So these objects are identified by calculating the difference between two frames. The two grayscale matrices, which are 3D matrices, are considered at a time and the absolute difference between the two is computed. The detection algorithm takes this difference matrix as an input. In the difference matrix, we find that the pixels will either tend towards 0 or 1. Pixels that tend towards 1 are basically white, that means the difference between the two pixels is large. This shows that there has been a large displacement of the object between the two frames. Pixels that are tending towards 0 or black show that there is no difference between the two frames, so the object hasn't moved in that position. So to enhance this detection algorithm, we have converted the difference matrix into a black and white or a binary image. This residual image is computed for a set of two frames. The white pixels show the change in position of the object between the two frames. The tracking algorithm basically is used to detect the motion of the moving object along the different frames. So the difference matrices are computed for every pair of adjacent frames for the video. Once these different matrices are computed, we can identify the motion of these objects by tracking where the white pixels along the different matrices move. So this represents the tracked object as we can see the bounding box is applied on the object where white pixels are uh, more in number. So for every frame of the image the bounding box varies and shows the motion of the object. So the algorithm that has been generated uses efficient techniques such as adjacent frame difference. This makes the algorithm computationally less intensive and very simple to implement and understand. Uh, a key observation for this algorithm is that the detection was performed at the same rate as that uh, as the frame capture of the video. This shows that the algorithm can be extended to real time and online applications with ease without any degradation of the quality of performance. The references for this project are as below, I mean, as shown. Thank you. Now we will proceed to uh, show the video that has been used for object motion detection and tracking. It's a simple video with uh, movement of an object. The algorithmic implementation of this uh, motion detection and tracking is as shown. Basically a pre-processing function is first called. The pre-processing function is loaded with the video, the pre-recorded video. Uh, the AVI format is used because it is most compatible with all platforms for MATLAB. Once this video is read, uh, the frames of the video are separated using the read command. The specifications of a video that are required for further processing involve the number of frames, the rate at which the frames are separated, the height and width of each frame and the format. So basically one frame is accessed at a time and the color map or the RGB values within the frame are stored in a variable. 
this frame is saved as a jpeg image the jpeg images of all the frames are combined again and played to check whether unwanted artifacts have been generated the rgb images that are generated here are then converted to grayscale so this pre processing algorithm is basically called in the main detection and tracking phase so uh, once the pre processing is performed these are the parameters that are uh, returned from the pre processing function so the first step after pre processing is computing the frame difference so for we iterate over all the frames and calculate the difference between the two images or the two frames this is stored in a variable and this is basically converted to a binary format this binary format conversion is performed so that it is easier to track the uh, motion of the object because the white pixels are more evident on a black background so tracking is performed as shown basically we access every pixel in a uh, in the residual image and check for a threshold once it is identified that the pixel is white that is there has been motion we set the boundary conditions for drawing the boundary box so this is performed for both the height and the width of the boundary box then we check those frames where there has been a motion where that is where the residual image has certain white pixels so only for those pixels we identify the boundary conditions and track the position of the image so demonstration of this can be shown so as we can see uh, individual frames are being generated this involves the name of the frame and the number of the frame motion underscore gray is the conversion of the same frames into grayscale so see as we can see the tracking of the object as it moves the white pixels show where the object is moving the bounding boundary box moves along with it um, just for the sake of completeness uh, this movie player shows the recombination of the frames after they are computed this shows that no unwanted artifacts have been generated when the frames have been computed so it is seen how simple and easy this project is to implement and the efficiency of the project is evident with the resultant video so i hope you have enjoyed thank you